Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful in the studio today with a share of my just finished, I think if I'm finished, page for May. I'm way behind. Uh, this is Roxy's Journal of Stitchery project that was led by Rachel and Sarah Roxburgh. Um, Rachel's from Roxy Creations and Sarah is Roxy Creations by Sarah. I'll put links um, for this series down below if you'd like to join. Even though it's finished, finishing in June and they're going to start another slow stitching series. You can start this anytime. It's lots of fun. I was brand new to slow stitching. So they walk you through each step each month and it was a very doable project. You just did one page a month. For the next one, they're going to be doing two pages a month. I think because I'm so far behind in this and I was wanting to learn slow stitching kind of for a specific reason that I'll tell you about later. So I, I think I'm not going to join the next one. Um, I think it's too much for me to try to get finished in uh, the amount of time and I don't want to feel like I'm falling farther and farther behind always uh, just because I have so many projects going at once. So um, this is my May page. We're already almost through June and I haven't started June, but I wanted to share what I have so far. It seems like each month I've been maybe kind of not sure I'm finished and leaving a little something that I might still do before I sew this into the book. Uh, and that's the case again for this month. So this month's prompts, they draw a prompt out of two bags, one's for the background, one's for the embellishment. They did that every month, and then every week on Wednesdays, they each did videos just for that stage that they were on in their page. And it's great because every there's two different people that have different ideas, even with the same theme. You're learning new things that I had no idea about because I'd never slow stitched before every single month. So it's been really lots of fun. Um, and I really enjoyed this one. I was waiting for Bird to come up in the prompts. And so I was happy that um, it finally did. The background for this one is kind of a little throw you off because it's supposed to be your favorite color. And then um, colorful birds, I think, or birds, something could be multiple birds, was the embellishment. The background is supposed to be your favorite color. Well, for my entire life that I remember, my adult life anyway, if you ask me what my favorite color is, I always said the rainbow because I couldn't choose just one. And so I, and then I, I thought, well, a rainbow of color, I, I had these fabrics that I printed that were made from uh, strips of papers that I had painted. So I had hand painted a bunch of papers with my jelly plate, did all kinds of things to them, tore them into strips, and then um, decoupage them onto a master board and then printed that and made these um, fabrics. So I had some scraps of that left and I thought, well, that's kind of a rainbow of color, so I'll use some of that. But I thought if I did the whole thing of that, I wouldn't be able to, it would be so busy and colorful that I wouldn't be able to see my bird and see what other things I did. They would kind of be hidden in the background. So I decided I would take maybe another color, something that looked good with those, but another color that was maybe a favorite thing of mine, and that would be natural rust. So I had also rusted a bunch of fabric recently, um, and I did a little video about that, I think. So you can maybe look back and find um, how I rusted uh, metal and then fabric. Uh, so I thought I would use some of that too. So I've used some hand-painted fabric, kind of. It's printed from hand-painted and then rusted fabric, and then just another little scrap here of something that I liked, just to kind of uh, give me a third fabric to work with um, that all kind of tied together. And because it was kind of a different color palette than I had used before, these are also some of my favorite colors because like I said, I love the rainbow, so I have lots of favorite colors. But turquoise is another one that um, I make jewelry, and so turquoise was always a big, part of that and one of my favorite stones. And then and this gold color, and this was actually, this embellishment was actually a doily that was already those colors, different colors. Uh, so I just kind of, as another little focal point to balance out my bird. So for my bird, since that was the kind of focal point you were supposed to have, I knew that I wanted to do a bird all along somewhere in this journal. Part of it is because it's a slow stitch and it's called the Journal of Stitchery, I wanted the each page for that month to kind of reflect something that was going on in, in life in that month and kind of my surroundings. So like January, 
that is representative of my bathroom window because I would see bunnies out there and we were in January, it was totally white outside from the snow. So things like that I wanted to incorporate in each page, something that was personal. And so for me, we have in the spring, um, in around May is when the bats come back and the robins come. And my husband has uh, this habit every year of letting the robins build a nest in a certain place. They always build it in the same spot. And so in his mind, those are the same robins coming back, whether it's the child or the parent, I don't know. But it's just, they're very friendly. They're very social birds. And he actually buys mealworms and every morning goes and leaves them out on the patio for them. And so they talk to him. They perch on our little um, door handles and look, you know, hang out through the, the glass doors. Um, when we're sitting in a room having coffee or something, they'll, they'll be there. They're just very social. So we, uh, and we call them Robin and we'll go outside and they'll follow you around. And even if you're in the house, they'll follow you from window to window. You know, a lot of times I'll see them in my studio window, you know, seeing what I'm working on. Um, so I wanted to do Robin. And so what I had done was I took a picture of our actual Robin. So this is our Robin. We have a bunch of, we call them our Robin, but they're wild, you know. Um, but there are about six of them now that hang out. And um, this was one that's kind of the friendliest one that will talk to us. So I had taken a picture and, you know, this is the actual photograph. And I printed it out on just plain paper just to kind of figure out my size that I wanted. And so I would just kind of cut them out and lay them on my page. And I realized I, I didn't want him to go this direction. I wanted him to face the other direction. So I work on a Mac um, computer, and when you pull up a picture, it goes in preview. And in up on the toolbar at the top, there's tools. And so if you click on tools, then you can you know look down and they'll say flip horizontally or flip vertically. You can flip your picture the other direction if you flip horizontally and your bird's now facing the other way. So that's the first thing that I did. And then I kind of had to decide the size. So I was just kind of adjusting. This is a little smaller of a version. I ended up kind of going with that other version. And then the other thing that I did was I, I went ahead and changed its color a little bit. <clears throat> as far as the bird goes, the actual bird, I changed the color in also in preview. And I just went and adjusted things like saturation and that sort of thing just to kind of get him... Um, to be a little bit more colorful than how he naturally was. Um, I just wanted him to kind of go with the turquoises and the different colors in my page than just to be kind of um, more monochromatic with just his red breast. So I adjusted the color a little bit to add in this little kind of turquoisey color. And then it kind of brightened up the orange a little bit. And I really liked that combination with my page. So I also knew that when I cut them out, um, one of the things that I think it was Sarah, or no, Rachel that did in hers, was needle turn applique. I think that's what it's called. So before when I had done my title page not knowing about applique at all, I cut really close to the edge of my things, not leaving any room to turn anything under. Um, and this was because I didn't, I hadn't learned that yet. So my title page has it with all the frayed edges. So I decided to do what she did and cut, cut around my bird, leaving a little edge so that I could needle turn that under and attach it to my page. So in doing that, um, I, I had to put this into Photoshop and get rid of the background and then I knew I didn't want a white edge, you know, that I turned because in case I don't get it all turned perfectly, I don't want to see that white edge. So I went ahead just to make it coordinate with my page. I gave it this color background so that it wouldn't be a white turned edge. I would have at least a color. And that way, if I didn't get it all covered up perfectly, uh, it would still kind of blend in. So that's how I came to what I was going to do for my bird. So I took the feet off because I found 
I found a piece of fabric and you can't tell that it was fabric now, but I found a little piece of fabric that was a nest. Um, I decided I wanted it to be sitting on a nest because at that time it was working on its nest. So I found a, a picture of a fabric that was, I think, a Kathy Holden fabric. And I just cut out the nest. It had some little flowers around it. It had some other things, but I just cut all that away and just kept this part. And then Sarah in hers, she did um, some actual, some twigs. And I can't remember, she used yarn or some thicker thread or something to do her twigs. And I wanted to use a different material that maybe wouldn't be found in slow stitching. And I remembered I had um, some garland. I couldn't find it. Uh, I, I think it may be out in the other workshop, but I went out in my greenhouse and I thought I've got some fake flower things out there. Maybe I'll find this, this, um, it, what I was looking for, it was actually like wired ribbon sort of thing, uh, that was actually birch bark that was wrapped around wire. And that's what I couldn't find, but I did find some, it was like a berry garland and the wire was wrapped in like a wood colored paper. So it, it looked like natural twigs. I thought worst case, I'll go out in the yard and get some actual twigs and, and couch those on. But I, I didn't, I, I went ahead and used this wired thing. I had used um, a wired thing in my butterfly page, if you watched. And so I kind of thought it was fun to use that again. So I used that and just couched them on in a coordinating color. Um, oh, I should step back to my background. When I put those on, I didn't show those up close. I just used cantha stitching, um, and I did this in a turquoise color. So I did cantha this way on the colorful ones, and then on the rust ones, I just used a coordinated rust uh, thread and just uh, did a cantha on those. And then this piece, I did more of, um, I think I put it on initially with kind of a hidden stitch, but I just used some little um, crisscrossy kind of things in two different colors where the fabric already crisscrossed in another color, just to kind of add to the pattern. Okay, so that was my backgrounds, my bird. Um, so for my actual bird then, I kind of did, um, it's not really a satin stitch, it's more of a split stitch, and I just did it really randomly. I wanted it to kind of look like a paint by number sort of idea, um, with, you know, kind of painting with the thread and trying to, you know, do multicolors and give it that feathery kind of look, but not using one color. So for example, this, the breast, when I looked at my picture, you can see there's lighter and darker. So I, I really just kind of mixed it in, um, maybe three or four colors of that, and then lots more colors in the, the turquoise and the dark grays and that sort of thing for the other feathers. And then our bird, our robin, one of the things my husband likes about it is when it's talking to you, it'll kind of like the feathers on its head will kind of come up and it looks like little hair sticking up. I didn't do a very good job of it, but I used turkey work and then clipped it really short and gave him a haircut just so it has that kind of hair standing up look. I haven't done anything to the eye yet. I think I am going to do the eye still um, and, and hopefully that'll turn out and I won't mess it up. Um, and then for the nest, I wanted it very textural. So I used um, a couple of different browns that were kind of how the nest looked already. And I used all six strands of uh, just the regular embroidery floss and kind of just randomly went where those two colors, the dark brown and light brown were. And then I took some really thick other um, textiles. I had actually taken apart some, uh, and I think I showed it in my very first video that I did when um, talking about kind of collecting materials because I was new to this. I didn't have all the different kinds of threads and things that they used. I actually took apart a bunch of um, upholstery trims and they kind of had some chenille texture to them. So I used some of those things in here just to get some more texture and kind of, you know, birds make nests out of all sorts of things and you know, you might find junk in their, you know, um, fabric softener sheets or thread, whatever they could find outside. In fact, we used to, my sister and I used to do this, um, when we would knit a lot, we would throw some scraps outside 
um, when birds were nesting so that they could take those little soft pieces and different things and use them in their nest. So I wanted to kind of do a nod to that, to putting yarns and different thicker things in the nest. So that's my bird. And then I just kind of went over the flowers that were there and I did add some little tiny seed beads for the centers of those. Um, but I, and I may add some things like I don't have any buttons, just, I want some more kind of, I wanted this to kind of end up getting a little bit of a bohemian look because that's what this, um, little embroidery doily piece was to me. Uh, so I kind of took that and then just added some different stitches in different colors just to get that a little bit more colorful and then, um, did some, a blanket stitch with, then I whipped it on just the straight part. Uh, on the edge uh, with my lace and and then just some random different pattern stitches here or there just to kind of add more pattern so I may play around with this a little bit more again before it gets into my book but it was close enough to finish um, I kind of wanted to leave a little bit of something on every page not finished so that when I do a final flip through um, it might have something else on here I could see maybe a word being here or something like that so I'm going to play around with them all, I think, a little bit more before I put them in the book. I'm working on my title page still. These aren't stitched in. I want to add a little bit to that, too, in some way. Um, these are not stitched in yet, either. I know I wanted to do my little step here that I hadn't finished. This one, I think, is pretty much done. So we'll see. But now I'm on to this one. And then, wouldn't you know, June, uh, page, the background for June is... Uh, hand painted or hand dyed fabric which is kind of what I did over here so I'm actually okay with that because it could be kind of fun to use some more of my fabrics that I've done or even do some and then make them kind of coordinate with this one in a way over here and then the embellishment for June is heart which I I did a heart here and this one is all kind of a patchwork with stitches so I may do this one, a patchwork, but with different fabrics and things too. I have no idea. I'm not that far yet because I just I just finished this one and tried to work a little more last night on, on this one. So uh, we'll see. We'll get there eventually. So that is my Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. And again, I will put links down below in case you want to do this project. It's lots of fun. So have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.